Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to toggle Divi properties on Click with jQuery. Now this tutorial is going to involve a lot of uh, CSS and jQuery code. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below, which will take you to the post, which has all these codes that you need to add onto your design to make it work. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So we are here in our admin dashboard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, give a page a name. So since this is about toggling the uh, transform, this is what I'm going to make my page title be. Next, I'm going to click here on use Divi Builder, and then I'm going to build from scratch. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a two column structure. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And in here, we're going to have a blurb. So I'm going to select it. Now let's start working on this. So first of all, I need to get rid of all this text. We don't need it. The title, you can also change this to whatever you want. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now over here for the icon, I'm going to choose an icon. So I'm going to activate use icon. And then I'm going to choose the icon I need to use. And I'm going to go with this computer here. Next, I'm going to come over here to design text. And then just make sure everything is aligned center. And then we're going to go back over here to the content and add a background. So I'm going to click here on background. Click this plus button and add my hexadecimal value for my background. Okay, so now that I've added that, next I'm going to change my icon color. So I'm going to come back over here to design, image and icon, make my icon white. And now you can see because we have this uh, dark background, our text is not easy to read here. So we need to make some adjustments there as well. So I'm going to come over here to text and just change this from dark to light. Now let's head over to spacing because right now, as you can see, our design here doesn't have enough breathing space. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to start off here with the margin. So I'm going to start here by adding a zero to the margin bottom. And then I'm going to start working on the padding. So for the padding here, I'm going to give it 15% uh, to the top. And this also needs to be applied to the bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain so my same value can be applied. And then for the left and right, it's also going to be 10% and it's going to be applied both to the left and right. So now you can see our design has some breathing space. So pretty much where I'm happy with this design, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now, um, for this design to work, we're going to need another blurb. So without uh, going back and doing all these settings that I've just done, I'm just gonna duplicate this, and then I'm gonna come in here and make changes to this one here. So what I need to do now is to click on this gear icon to access my settings. And first of all, here we need to change background color. So this time our background color is going to have a transparency. So I'm going to click here on background and then I'm going to drag this slider down so I can get this RGBA values. So the value I'm going to add is going to go between the brackets like that. Now let's head over here to the top because we also need to make some changes. So first of all, we are going to add some text here. So I'm just going to paste it. And now because we have a lighter background, uh, we need to swap this and make sure that this color is easier to read on the text. So we need to make it darker. So I'm going to come over here, text, then I'm going to change this from light to dark. Now it's easier to read. The next stage is to get rid of uh, this icon. So the next thing we need to do now is to add a custom padding of 20% to the top. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and then I'm going to change this to 20%. So as you can see, above, uh, as I enter 20% here, it's also updating over here to the left. So I need to break this chain and then just bring this back to 15%. So now it's time to position this blurb. So this bottom one here needs to be under this top one. The next step is to add some CSS code to the main element. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and this is the CSS that we need to add. And as I mentioned before, the CSS can be found in the link, which is in the video description below. Right, so now that we've added our main CSS code, the next stage now is to come over here to our Z index. So that can be found here on visibility and we need to set it to four. So now I'm just gonna switch around and then you can see that everything has moved over. This is now on the top and the other blurb that we had is now on the bottom. Now let's add the transform options. So to do that, we need to come over here to design, transform, and the example we're gonna start off with is this first one here, transform scale. So here we're gonna set it to 20% and then we're gonna come over here to transform origin and make sure that we've set this to the top one. Okay, so this is where we want it to be. All right, so now that we've had, that, well, now that we have that set, the next stage now is to add our CSS class. So we're going to come over here to Advanced CSS ID and Classes, and this is the CSS class that we need to add. 
So what we need to do next is to add some CSS code to this actual page to make this all work. So I'm gonna save this first, and then I'm gonna come to the bottom of the page and click this gear icon. So here is where we want to come to advanced custom CSS and paste this CSS code. Now we need to go and add our jQuery to the head section of our website. And to do that, we need to go into our theme options. So I've got a tab open here for our theme options. So where we need to go is into the tab, which says integration. So over here, and it also says here, add code to the head of your blog. This is where you want to add the code. So I'm gonna paste it in here and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and save. So now let's try our animation and see if it works. So I'm gonna come over here to our first tab, save this. I'm also going to publish the page and then I'm gonna exit the visual builder, right? So now when we click on this, you notice that the animation is now working, but of course you have to make sure you click on this icon. So when you click on it, it covers the whole thing. And then when you click again, it just goes back to this position. So this is how the jQuery works with our examples here. All right, so let's do one more example. So I'm gonna enable the visual builder here. So what we need to do, since we're going to use all the elements that we have in here, is to just duplicate this and bring elements over here to the right column. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here to expand settings. Now, of course, here we have two modules, but we can't see them because uh, one is on top of the other. So in order for us to see it, we need to come here to wireframe mode. So now, as you can see, they're now visible. So I'm gonna duplicate the first one, drag it over to the right, duplicate the second one, drag it over to the right, okay? Now I can just switch back over here to my desktop view, and this is what we have. Okay, so let's start working on this one now. So the idea here is to slide open on click. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon to access my module settings. So I'm gonna come straight to my transform translate. So I'm gonna click here on design, transform, and then I'm gonna click here on transform translate. So the value I need to add here is going to be on my X axis. So I'm gonna break the chain and set this to 100%. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and save. And then one more thing that we need to do here is to come to our section settings, click on advanced visibility. And for our overflow, horizontal overflow, you need to make sure it's set to hidden because when we animate here, this expands beyond the section. All right, so let's save this and let's take a look, quick look. So before we um, take a look at this design, we need to make sure that we reset the settings that we had over here. So on transform origin, it was at the top here. So we need to make sure that it's back over here to the center. And then over here as well, we need to make sure that it's not at 20% anymore. It's also reset to zero. So now I'm gonna save this, save one more time and then exit the visual builder. So now on click, you can see that it is animating. So for all these examples, all you have to do is to play around with the perspective and this is going to give you the different type of animations. So my next examples, I'm just gonna duplicate this uh, twice and then I'm just gonna go in and play around, play around with the um, perspective and see what results I come up with. So for the um, next examples, you can really go creative and see how far this takes you. So let me just show you where to make the changes to in any of your future creative designs. So I'm just gonna come back over here now to my wireframe mode because here you need to make sure that all your changes are happening on this top. So I'm gonna go with this one here. So I'm gonna click here on module settings and then you can slip, um, switch over to the desktop mode. Now here, all the changes that we're making are on the uh, transform. So this is where you want to play around with all your settings. So you can reset here on the transform scale and then here on the rotate, you can play around with, with the degrees. So right now here we're at 85. So let's say I set this to 90 and save. Then I'm gonna save the page. Now over here, when I refresh my page and check the animation, you can see now that it's opening. And then if I need to make any adjustments again, I can just click here on wireframe mode, go into my blurb, design, transform. So this time I'm gonna change this to 85. And also here on the transform origin, you can also set it to a different side. So right now it's set to the right. So let's say you want to set it to the left, you can just change the uh, origin here and then save changes. I want to save one more time. And then now we're going to refresh the page and see what it looks like. So there you go. So now you can see we have a different type of animation. 
So now let's take a look at the examples that I was playing around with. So this is the first one here. So on click, it just zooms in and zooms out to cover this content. And then over here, it slides to the left. And then on the bottom here, it exits the door, opening up on click. And then this one here opens to the side. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.